What's going on everyone, it's Blandon here again from Elite 4 TV and today I want to share my pre-Wiggly Jungle Cup. Slightly hesitant to put this together, but after hearing so many people talk about losing the lead, losing the lead, I'm very confident some of the strategies and the principles are applicable in the current cup as well. So recently I just had nationwide remote tournament. Because we wanted to increase the number of participants in our cups, we added a lot of people from different cities at the regionals, across three cities actually, and we're all beginning to hit ultra friends, so we hope to have bigger remote tournaments soon. Looking at my team is very, very standard. I started with the Vigoroth, Noctowl, and Venusaur. Those were the standard three. And for Electric, I took Graveler, and it ran Rock Blast and Stone Edge, recommended by Valor Ash. Now for the Bug, I took Forestress, it made a lot of sense because besides Vigoroth as a safe switch in this meta, Forestress is actually the second safest switch because it only loses to Vigoroth and Noctowl. But if they were to switch in slightly slower, you'll be able to get two heavy slam off, forcing a shield and putting a ton of damage out with the bug bites. Now my last slot, I took the Heracross and Heracross was to hard counter the Vigoroth. And nothing in this meta can really beat a Vigoroth with a slight energy advantage and piggyback. So Heracross and Vesper Queen are the only two that I believe are true counters to Vigoroth. So that's why I bought Heracross. Now in the beginning of this cup, I was actually exploring a ton of lineups that can win despite a bad lead. And the strategy was simple. Going back to Sacrificial Swap, the OG version and not the one that Zaronic talks about. Okay, so Sacrificial Swap, in short, purposely swapping into Pokemon that you use as a sacrifice so you can bait out a specific opposing Pokemon that would be a threat to your sweeper. So I'm gonna give you a very, very simple example and I'm gonna show you in the video. So in this lineup, you can see this is Nemo Bloodstorm's famous line, Vigoroth, Lantern, Vesper Queen. And then my sacrificial swap line, there are two things that are very, very important here. You got Graveler and then Graveler's perfect coverage being Heracross and Heracross is the sacrificial swap. And then the second principle here is you need a sweeper, the sweeper being the Venusaur. So in order for Venusaur to sweep here, what would we need to get rid of? It's obviously the Vesper Queen. So we are going to sacrifice the Heracross to the Vesper Queen. And once the Vesper Queen is out of the way, the Venusaur is going to be able to sweep. So I'm going to show you in this gameplay. And this is going to work even if you're facing a bad lead, such as Graveler versus Vigoroth. Let's have a look before we look into the matches. So shout out to Sunjin for letting me record this. So we start off with Graveler against Vigoroth, and it's a bad lead for us, so we're going to swap out straight away into our Heracross. This is a positive matchup, it's going to force our opponent to swap. He decides to do some chip damage with that body slam. We're able to get this Mega Horn off. So here he decides to farm me up, and I'm just able to get that Mega Horn off with just an under tap there. And here I'm going to come back out with Graveler. So what am I able to do? I'm going to just be able to farm up a little bit of energy because this Vesper Queen is locked in. Uh, it can't switch out. That's a very important part to the strategy. So now that the Vesper Queen is gone, this Graveler is just there to do one more charge move. And we pretty much let it go. And Venusaur comes out. We're going to be able to finish this lantern off with just a couple of vine whips to get a bit of energy advantage. We blocked this hydro pump and now we're just going to farm two frenzy plant in a row so we can finish off this figure off. And he decides to piggyback off me here but that's pretty much GG so we sweep with the Venusaur. I'm going to be able to show you how I try to apply this within the tournament. Hopefully you find it interesting. So here we go. So in the first match up, up against Wilson, as you can see, this is quite interesting team. He's got Raticate and you'll notice that out of these six Pokemon, none of them actually hard counters Vigoroth. So Vigoroth is going to be a safe switch for me. And then also Heracross is very good against this team as well with just Noctowl being the only counter. So I'm going to be able to 
try and use double counter here. Realistically, I should use something that's going to bait out the knockdown so I can knock it out and then sweep with the Heracross, but I decided to just go for the double counter line, double fighting line, as you will see. Starting off with a Heracross lead and we are leading into Graveler, so a positive matchup for us. And here I'm ready to switch out to a Vigoroth. And in the first Sky Attack we are just going to shield that. And then we're going to try and wait for the next Body Slam, so we can do two in a row. But I don't think I reached uh, the second one. So realistically there I should have just waited. The best thing to do there was just wait until he gets the sky attack off and just go for double body slam. But now I am still slightly ahead. I mean, we've got one shield advantage, but I, I make a crucial mistake um, here because, you know, I didn't piggyback in the beginning. I, I'm in, unable to get another body slam off. So here I decide to shield this rock blast. And then we've got Ivysaur coming out and that's another mistake here I should have gone for Megahorn which was the correct play and here he's able to get a sludge bomb and then I'm just patiently waiting for the next sludge bomb I'm trying to piggyback but it's not going to be enough for two sky attacks so it was my mistake because yeah, I mean, I should have gone for the Megahorn there. <laughs> and then now, he is able to go for power before I get to my Megahorn. And that's GG round one. Despite winning the lead, I lost the round one because I made some crucial mistakes there. But I decided to go with the same line. And here you can see I have a bad lead, but I'm going to switch into Vigoroth straight away. Because it's a safe switch. He decides to switch into... Ivysaur, which is not really a counter due to the fact that Power Whip, it costs the same as Sludge Bomb. So Frenzy Plant actually is way more advantageous against a Vigoroth. So here I'm going to shield the Sludge Bomb. I mean, it's no different for him if he used Power Whip or Sludge Bomb, really. I'm still able to maintain switch advantage despite I s switched out first. So Vigoroth, as you can see, is very powerful in this meta. You need a hard counter for Vigoroth to take switch advantage. So here, body slam spam, as we all say. And here, I try to just save the health of my Vigoroth. And then out comes Forestress. And Forestress is going to be able to just get a heavy slam off. And I just couldn't believe he didn't shield. <laughs> but he probably knew it was a heavy slam. So, But regardless, the Rock Blast would have finished me off. And here, I thought about it. I was thinking, well, I could just farm up a Body Slam here. But what I should have done is wait for my Switch Cock for a little bit longer. Because now I'm in a very, very bad spot. This knockdown is literally one hit away from a sky attack, but I'm able to just get that counter off to finish it off. So it was a very, very close game. So third game here, we have the lead with the Graveler. So we switch into Vig and there was, was a blind switch. Not as bad as, you know, switching into Vigoroth with energy advantage. So Vig into Vig. Unless there's a blind switch, it's pretty bad. So I'm able to piggyback there. And I decide to shield because I pretty much have another body slam ready to go. He decides to throw off his last bulldoze. So here I'm up against Graveler. It's going to be finishing me off with just two or three rock flows. So it's going to be pretty tough for me now because... Yeah, but he decides to switch into knockdown and I thought he's lagging there and I asked him for a rematch, but he said, actually, it was GG for him because I'm able to finish him off with just fast move. So he decides to sort of 
leave this game. So that's GG round three. Uh, very good game, Wilson. I yeah, made some crucial mistake. I think that was the beginning of the Jungle Cup, but um, no excuses. So in the second match, I'm up against Jaden. Very interesting line as he did not bring a Noctowl. He's got a Masquerine instead. And he went for Golem and Graveler. So looking at this lineup, Forestress is actually a very, very solid safe switch here. The only thing it's going to be weak against is a Vigoroth. But if I switch into it and I have a little bit of an energy advantage, I'm in a, in a pretty good spot. So that's what I went with. I went with a perfect coverage, which is Graveler and Venusaur with Forestress as the safe switch. Let's see how it plays out. So here we lead with the Graveler and we are going to face Vigoroth. So a bad lead for us. So here I decide to switch straight away and then Forestress comes out. Obviously he doesn't need to switch because it's a positive matchup. So that's the only thing that sucks about Graveler switching into Forestress because if you face a Vigoroth you can't force your opponent to switch. But nevertheless our opponent decides to switch into Vesper Queen and Vesper Queen against Forestress, I think I would probably tank those Heavy Slam because, you know, now the Vesper Queen is stuck, you don't really want it to have too much health there. So now I'm able to just farm it up with the Graveler. It's able to get a couple of, well, just one X Scissor. Does a decent amount of damage, even though it's a bug move. But here, you can see I'm knowing he's gonna, you know, either come in with the Vigoroth, and I don't know what's in the back, but he decides to come in with the Razor Leaf Victory Bell. So it was a good switch there. I think his switch clock is probably still locked because he switched in quite late, and so he decides to just leave his Victory Bell out, obviously because uh, Vigoroth isn't the best Pokemon against Venusaur. So Venusaur is able to s sort of take the sweep here as, as we discussed in the beginning of the video. So here, it's going to be a very, very close one because the Graveler, I did not do an under tap there. You know, I, I was hesitant because I was, I haven't had enough practice <laughs> before this match on under tap. So I actually thought about it, but I didn't do it. And it was very very close match so here we've got graveler against golem we're slightly tankier we should win this mirror match a little bit of lag but it's okay we are quite even there so i decide to switch because i wanted to save that rock blast um unfortunately for Jaden, he actually swapped at the same time we thought about the same thing and my swap is a forestress and his swap is a victory bout so that's unfortunate for him. I decide to over farm a little bit there and get the heavy slam off and I'm able to finish the victory bell and still have another heavy slam left over. So whatever comes in, we're gonna go for the heavy slam. And let's see, are we able to get one more? He decides to farm me up, so yes, we're able to get one more. He decides to conserve the health of his Vesper Queen. I think it's probably not the best thing to do because I've got a Graveler coming in. So I'm able to one-shot that Vesper Queen with the Rock Blast. And then here is pretty much GG. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, just a fatal swap there. The Victory Bout into the Forestress. We swapped at the same time. Uh, so it's GG round two. So against Flesus in round three, very interesting because she only has one counter for my Heracross and that is the Noctowl. So if I can bait out the Noctowl with a sacrificial swap, I should be able to win with a Heracross and shields. So what is going to be the bait? It's either going to be Venusaur or Forestress. So 
Let's see how this plays out. So here I decide to leave with the Graveler and then Forestress is going to be my bait for the Flyer. So against a Forestress, you know, it's about who is willing to invest the shield. So I decide to go for a Rock Blast and then go for the Switch here. Hopefully I can bait out the Flyer and here it is. So the Knockdown comes out. I'm able to get this Heavy Slam off. I mean, I have a slight energy advantage, so she's going to try and get a couple of Sky Attacks uh, to finish me. So I'm able to just get one more Heavy Slam. So be interesting to see if she shields. So she decides not to shield. So I decide to shield because I'm going to be able to just hold my switch advantage. And I think that's very much worth it. So here the foresters comes out that's okay we're going to take the heavy slam because now we can see what she puts out and so now we've got the switch advantage and we're able to use graveler to finish this off we're going to do a rock blast before we switch out and we're going to be able to finish it off with heracross So that's GG round one. As you can see, the sacrificial swap to bait out the Noctowl. And we're able to just safely close it with Heracross. So in the second round, I decide to switch it up a little bit. And this time, I'm going to use the Heracross so that it, she know, she doesn't know what we're doing. So we're going to use the Heracross as, as the bait. And what happens is, Vigoroth with two shield is also a sweeper so here she decides to shield and it is the right thing to do because otherwise she would be left with very very little health however personally i would probably just take it but it's it's very hard to tell because if you haven't played against the heracross too much you don't know how much health you would be left with so here I'm able to gain a ton of energy because she decided to switch, uh, shield her knockdown and there's a ton of HP there. So I'm able to throw the Stone Edge off and she was not expecting it. And so now it's an uphill battle because I've got a Vigor off with two shield and there is not much that can beat this Vigor off with two shields. So here Heavy Slam and we go piggyback for the Body Slam and we finish it off with the Bulldoze. Close to finishing off. That's GG round 2. So in our final round we're up against Chopping Frogs, a very interesting lineup. So Heracross is looking very strong but it is weak against Vesper Queen and Noctowl. So I'm banking that he doesn't play both Vesper Queen and Noctowl in the same line. So my strategy going in is to bait out the Flyer using Noctowl and then hopefully I can use Graveler to finish off the Flyer and then sweep with Heracross. So let's see how this plays out. So here we're going to lead with the Graveler and then hope to bait out the Noctowl. So we start off with a positive lead. So great, Vigoroff comes out. We're going to come in with the hard counter, Heracross. We're going to shield one and take one. And we'll have a close combat loaded up for the Noctowl. So here he goes for the body slam. And then we're going to finish it off with just counter. And now that we're going to greet that Noctowl with a close combat, So he decides to take it, and does a fair amount, about 55% I'd say, close to 60. And then now the Graveler is able to come back out just to farm that Noctowl. I shouldn't have waited for the switch clock there, so I could actually just lock that Noctowl in. But here he decides to switch into the Venusaur, which is good. He's locked in. 
so he made a mistake here and went for the sludge bomb. You should always go for frenzy plant against the foresters, but it's very much GG because we were able to predict the lead. Actually, I didn't predict; I just played. But um, yeah, sometimes you get it, but we're already, you know, ready for a sacrificial swap, even if it was a bad lead. So here we're able to finish it off with just heavy slams. So that's GG round one. So round two, I decided to go for the same thing. So now he has switched up his line a little bit. He leads with Venusaur. We're going to swap into Forestress and it's going to force him to switch into his Flyer. And so we bait out the Knockdown. Here he goes for the Sky Attack, of course. And then we're able to just piggyback off him with the Heavy Slam. And then here he is going to go for the Sky Attack straight away. So he he wasn't too sure where my heavy slam is at. He didn't want to take another one. Makes a lot of sense. So now I'm able to come back out with the Graveler. And then I'm likely going to have to take... Actually, he doesn't get to a Sky Attack, unfortunately. So here I'm able to just spam that Rock Blast. Whatever comes in is likely going to be Vigoroth. So I'm going to swap straight away into Heracross. And now because... Knockdown is gone. I know Heracross is in a good space with two shields. So here he goes for the Sludge Bomb. And then I go for the Mega Horn. And he's going to be able to just get one more at least. So I decide to shield and hope to farm this Venusaur up. And unfortunately he actually gets his last sludge bomb on a smidgen of health and that was pretty much GG for me because now the Vigoroth comes out and it's going to be able to just finish me off with a few more counters and he's still got a shield so that's GG round two and I'm trying to reflect back where I went wrong and he was quite ready for you know the foresters so what I need to do this time differently I decided to go in with the same line I know I can win it as long as I can do a little bit of chip damage with the graveler so here I decide to shield the frenzy plant we've done a bit of damage there so next time when the heracross comes out we should be able to finish it off but I am down one shield now so here I am going to go for the Body Slam. He decides to switch it up. He switched into Vigoroth instead for the Forestress. And yeah, maybe he didn't want the Knockdown to be sacrificed. So here, I'm able to just take one shield off him as well. And Heracross is going to come back out against the Vigoroth. He's got the Venusaur with Health Health in the back. And here I'm just going to go do some counter damage and then a new knockdown is going to come out to try and finish off Heracross. It makes a lot of sense. So we're able to just get the Graveler to come back out. So here, because he went for the Sky Attack, I'm able to just farm a few more hits for some extra energy. So we're going to greet the Vigoroth with a Rock Blast. So it's going to be pretty tough for him because we still have a Heracross in the back and we have one shield. So we're going to be able to finish it off with Mega Horn here. So GG round three. So thanks for watching. Apologies. I know the gameplay uh, is not as good as Velo Ash. You know, that guy is very talented and he spent way more time than me, to be fair. But um. Hopefully, sacrificial swap, you get how the strategy works. And then I uh, gave you guys a few more lines here that you guys could test out against some of the meta lines and how you could potentially set up the lead, which is on the left, or the swap on the right, and then the sweeper in the middle. And if you did learn something, enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and check out our Patreon. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be working on the next video which is going to be post wiggly and it's going to be
from one of the Argentinians. Uh, so very excited about that one. It's very late here. Um, so I'm not, you know, talking in a loud tone. My wife is asleep. But um, I look forward to putting that video out for you guys and uh, talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.